Hey guys, it's been a while. How have you all been? In this video, I'm going to be covering the CSK. Well, I'm not going to be covering the entirety of it, but I'll be covering a portion of the CSK collection API. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've already read the wiki page and the functions it offers. So let's go ahead and hop into the next slide. So just a quick disclaimer, the goal of this video is just to be a reference for how to use the API. So I'm going to be going over, I'll be using some stuff such as threading and sleeping in threads, static mutables. Those stuff I'm not going to bother covering. So if you want to know more about those, you can go ahead and look them up on Google. And some assumptions about what I expect you to know is that you know how to program stuff in Rust. You're familiar with Smashline 2, so once per fighter frames and on and its and stuff. And you understand how the character database's PRC works, UI Chara DB. You know what the name ID is for, what the UI Chara, Chara ID is for, and the general concepts of it. As for the goal of this video, what we're trying to do is that we make it so that when someone dies, their icon changes to woe is. So you have your character, when they die, they become woe is for a while. Then after a while, three seconds for example, they turn back to normal. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start. So here I have an example project set up with the dependency. So I have the CSK collection API. Then I have Skyline Smash and Smash Line for Smash Line 2 using the HCR branch. Not branch, the HCR organization's Smash Line. And hash 40. This is just to make it more convenient for me when uh, creating structures. So if you go into source, here we have some code set up. I'm just going to go over the important parts. So this is in main. Right now we have a to-do of adding the new UI Charo DB entry and UI layout DB entry. And then here we have our smash line 2 fighter common. So on in, it starts goes to the on in function here, which sets some global variables, static mutable arrays to the default value. We need to change this one to be the original UI Chara hash for the entry ID. And then once per fighter frame here, we check to see if their icon has changed. And if it is, we go back. We don't bother continuing. But if the, and then we check if the fighter is dead. If they are, we change that icon. So we have our to do's here. We have to implement the CSK collection API to change the icon. And for three seconds in revert, we have changed the UI Chara hash to the added Chara hash over here. And then we also have to update this so that it uses the original Chara hash with the CSK collection API. And well, firstly, I guess, adding a new UI Chara DB and UI layout DB entry. So let's go ahead and start working on it right now. So we can go ahead and go to the CSK collection API. And then we're going to go ahead and use add Chara DB entry info. So here we can go ahead and just format this. We have our default entry. All of this stuff, that's what it's associated with the UI Chara database stuff. Entry in the UI Chara database. So what I'm going to do right now is actually get rid of all of these. And then for this one, clone from UI Chara ID, we want to clone Mario's. So we can go ahead and do hash 40 UI Chara Mario. Since this one accepts a U64, which is going to be your hash 40, you have to get your string to a hash 40 somehow. But yeah, just make sure that you enter a hash 40 here. Then your UI Chara ID, your new one. We can go ahead and make it so that it's UI Chara woe is. That's going to be our new hash 40. Our new UI Chara ID, my bad. And then for our name ID, we want to go ahead and do the CSK collection API. String type. And we want to overwrite it. So don't stick with the original uh, name ID, which is Mario. If we're cloning Mario's entry. And we're going to make it so that our new string is woe is. And then the rest, we can do default default. But since you're also cloning from Mario, we also want to set the... Uh, let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Display order. We also want to overwrite this and make it hidden. So we don't have users or modders. Users, I guess, pick the new entry we have here. So this was assigned by type. Overwrite. And we're going to override it with negative one. Then the rest can be default. So whatever is in Mario structure, we can leave it as is. We can also go ahead and set the UI series ID to be overwrite. And we can set it to be invalid so it doesn't stick with Mario's icon, Mario series icon. And this basically adds our information here to the 
It adds it to the database UI Charo DB. If we look at the wiki here. Oh, my bad. I should probably get rid of this home. We see here that we can add way more information while either using the defaults or just specifying which one. But we just need these. We just need this for the very basic. I'm gonna go ahead and move this back here. Now that we have our Chara DB entry info, we could go ahead and add our layout one. Add Chara layout. This basically specifies how should the UI look like. The offset, the scale, the position and stuff. I'm just assuming that you already know what this is about. So let's just go ahead and do the CSK collection. For this one, we don't want to specify all the offsets, so we're just going to go ahead and clone from Mario. So UI layout ID, that was a U64, we can just hash 40. Well, is underscore zero zero. And then we're going to clone Mario's, so Mario. And the UI Chara ID is just going to be well is. And the Chara color, we'll just leave it as Mario's. So then the rest, you can just fill it up with default. And now we basically added our new UI Chara stuff. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and copy this. Then over here, when we change the icon, you want to change it to the what is UI Chara ID. So we got what two to do's done. This one inserts the new stuff into the UI Chara DB and UI Layout DB files. And over here, we're using the new UI Chara to change the icon to. And then here, we want to go ahead and set the original UI Chara hash to be the proper one. So we can use the CSK Collection API, get UI Chara from entry ID. And then given the entry ID here, which is what we have, it'll set it to be the original. So that way we know which icon to revert back to. So for example, we switch to UI Chara what is, then after three seconds, we look at this array and then switch back to the original one. So for example, if we have pit, we switch to what is, then when we see we have pit, we go back to pit. And then this to do is done. We have our once per fighter frame here. We get our entry ID. And if we're dead, we change the icon over here. And now we need to implement the actual icon change. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new thread and move everything into there. Oh, I think it was move. My bad. Move came before. All right. Then here we can go ahead and set it so that the CSK collection API change entry char UI. So we're going to go ahead and give it the entry ID that we have. Then the UI Chara hash we want to switch to, we already have it here, so it just passes it in. Then the color we currently have, we're going to go ahead and do original UI color entry ID as use size. Uh, I'm just assuming that you know how to index into arrays and what arrays are. If you need to know what those are, you can always use Google or watch very other people better than me explaining stuff on YouTube. And then we want to wait for three seconds, so we can do STD time. Uh, std thread my bad sleep std time duration from seconds three seconds and then once that's done we can switch back to the original ui hash entry id as u size and then we can go ahead and revert its change state back to normal back to false so the next time they die it automatically knows to change back and that is about it for the program part, programming part. We can go ahead and get rid of this to-do. So let's go ahead and walk over this real quick. When our plugin first runs, we go ahead and add a Chara DB entry info, which has a UI Chara ID of Vo is, and it clones from Mario's UI Chara. And then it overwrites Mario's name Chara with Wo is. So on the new struct, it replaces Mario with Wo is. And then this border, it overwrites it to be negative one, so it hides it. And then the UI series ID, it overwrites it to be zero, so we don't have a series attached to it. 
and then we fill out the rest with the defaults, which is going to be none. So it doesn't bother overwriting any other data. And then for the layout DB entry info, we go ahead and create a new layout. And then we clone Mario's and we change the UI Chara ID. Oh, wait. We almost forgot. We need to wrap this around the CSK collection, hash 40 type, and specify that we want to overwrite our hash 40. And then we just fill out the rest of the default. So we use Mario's values. And then that's about it. We just go ahead and run a normal smash line to once per fighter frame and on start. We install. Then on in, we reset our global variables to be proper. And then our once per fighter frame, we check to see if they're dead. And if they are, we change the icon to what is and we give it the proper entry ID. Over here, we go ahead and check to see if it's changed. And if it is, it just returns. Else, it changes it to true and creates a new thread which changes the icon, waits for three seconds, changes the icon back to the original, and then sets it back to false. So it's known, it's ready for another change. So let's go ahead and upload this plugin. Wait, my bad, cargo skyline run. This is a custom command, by the way, so don't expect it to just work on your end. If you're using normal, you could do cargo space skyline space run. But sometimes that's unreliable, so I just use my own script. Oh, let me just go back here. Run, all right. And now, let's see here. Where did it go? Oh, it's a lot. Do I have you? Yep. Let's go ahead and create a new directory. Let's call it woe is and let me see if i actually have that window pulled up uh there it is all right so here i have a config ready this one shares my custom dntx that i already have ready with all the other colors uh, let's see here all right Well, is we can go ahead and create the path so ui slash replace slash char 4 slash char 4 was it char 4 char 4 i think wait this was char slash char 4 and then we have our stuff closed in there so now i have my woes bntx which just replaces the mario icon with what is and then over here we can go ahead and just add my config over here, which shares all the files to the same. And now if we were to go ahead and boot up the game, everything should work. So let me just go ahead and... All right, now that we have our screen up, let's go ahead and just boot up the game. And as it takes a while to boot up on my Switch, I'll just wait for a bit. I'll pause the recording. When it's ready, I'll unpause it. So, see you guys soon. Oops, forgot to mention, make sure that you enable your mods. <laughs> Alright, and our hook spit out some stuff in the log, so yeah. Let's go ahead and boot up a match. Oh boy, there's a bit of lag here. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and pick Mario for example. And now let's go ahead and die. And congratulations, we got it working. And it switches back to Mario, so it'll be fine. So yeah, this is the intro for how to use the CSK Collection API. Uh, apologies if you guys didn't understand some of the concepts like threading or Mutable sleeping, but going over those would take a while longer. Uh, yeah, that's how you can use the CSK Collection API. Have fun messing around with the other functions, and thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.